Starting soon, the Monday Market Highlights podcast will be exclusively available on Milford's new podcast channel called On Track with Milford. Search On Track with Milford on your podcast app and tap subscribe so you don't miss out on any episodes. You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 21st of August and I'm Nick from Milford. Looking at the key economic news from last week, starting in Australia, we had the minutes to the RBA's August decision where they decided to leave the cash rate unchanged for the second consecutive meeting. There was little new in the minutes with the possibility of further tightening still on the table and future policy remaining data dependent. We also had the Australian employment data out for July falling by 14.6 thousand, below consensus of a 15,000 gain and in contrast to June's 31.6 thousand increase. It was the largest fall in employment year to date, primarily driven by a drop in full-time jobs. The unemployment rate also rose by more than expected in July to 3.7%, up from 3.5% in June and above consensus of 3.6%. The data potentially pointing towards a loosening labour market. In New Zealand, where the RBNZ interest rate decision out for August, where, as expected, they decided to keep the OCR unchanged at 5.5%. The bank made it clear that they will need to maintain restrictive monetary policy for the foreseeable future to ensure that inflation sustainably returns to the bank's targeted 1-3%. to Moving to the US, where the July FOMC minutes out, where majority participants agreed that a 25 basis point hike was appropriate and that they continued to see significant upside risk to inflation which could require more tightening. The upcoming data will continue to dictate the path of monetary policy and the market will be paying close attention to Powell's speech at Jackson Hole this week. US retail sales were also out for July, coming in at 0.7%, above consensus of 0.4% and indicating a healthy US consumer. Lastly in China, we had various data points including fixed asset investments, industrial production and retail sales, all coming in materially weaker than expected, continuing to depict a weakening economy in China. With GDP growth expectations drifting lower, the market will be watching closely to see if China will implement any stimulus, and if so, where that stimulus is targeted. Turning to equity news, it was another busy week of reporting globally, with the US and Australia continuing to ramp up and New Zealand just getting started. In the US, we had some of the large retail names report, including Walmart, who had a solid Q2 result, with sales in line with consensus and EPS coming in above expectations at $1.84. Full-year guidance was lifted slightly, but implied a cautious outlook for the second half, which is likely warranted given the current economic backdrop. TJX also reported a strong quarter, beating expectations and raising FY24 EPS guidance as they likely continue to take market share. Lastly in the US, we had the Ag Equipment OEM Deer & Co. report their Q3 earnings on Friday. It was a strong result ahead of expectations and guidance was lifted for 2023. They gave positive commentary on margins and inventory levels, however the key concern for the market is the demand outlook for 2024, and the result was overshadowed by concerns of the ag cycle peaking this year. In Australia, we had a raft of companies report, including car sales, who had a strong result in line with consensus and gave FY24 guidance broadly in line with expectations. Their market share continues to grow in all geographies, with strong results in US and Brazil specifically. Seek also reported last week, with a disappointing result and guidance materially undershooting expectations. The share price weakness was largely due to continued concerns around higher costs and weaker Asia growth. In New Zealand, we had Contact Energy report on Tuesday, with a strong result driven largely by retail pricing gains. FY24 guidance was lifted, and another positive was the company hinting towards a dividend increase in FY24 when the TY contract negotiations conclude. Looking at the week ahead, on the macro front, the key focus of the market will be watching Jackson Hole next week, starting on Wednesday in the US and going through to Friday, where Fed Chair Jerome Powell will be speaking. We also have flash PMIs out in the UK and the US. On the equity front, it's another very busy week with lots of companies reporting. Of note, in the US we have Lowe's, NVIDIA and Intuit. In Australia we have IAG, Charterhall and Ampol. And finally in New Zealand we have market heavyweights A2 and Chorus. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next week. Don't forget, this podcast is moving to Milford's new podcast channel. Search On Track with Milford on your podcast app and tap subscribe so you don't miss out.